हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर महेश मोहिते पीडियाट्रिशियन एंड पीडियाट्रिक इंटेंसिविस्ट फ्रॉम पनवेल रायगढ़ महाराष्ट्र टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू गिव एज पार्ट ऑफ द स्टीयर टू प्रोग्राम आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट थरो एग्जामिनेशन लेस्ट यू मिस समथिंग और थरो एग्जामिनेशन विल अवॉइड यू मिसिंग समथिंग व्हिच इज मोस्ट क्रूशियल टू द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ द पेशेंट वी ऑल are examining so many patients in the opd in the ipd in the icu and examination as you all understand and know and we have discussed in the tier 1 be is predominantly focused or guided by the history that we take so what i'm going to talk is definitely following and uh, following a detailed history there are certain exceptions to the rule where the examination becomes prior to history in a emergency we do something like in a als course immediate impression primary assessment secondary assessment if the patient is stable enough then in the second is uh, secondary assessment we go through symptoms and signs so here i am going to discuss about those signs in detail which will help you in avoiding any mistakes in diagnosis so as part of it we have we may consider two categories of patient a patient who is on the regular follow up in the opd where you are already examined in the past quite detail there perhaps you may be doing focused examination relevant to the clinical symptoms that he comes with at that particular visit but otherwise whenever any new patient comes to the opd or ipd he requires a detailed complete clinical evaluation all admitted patients definitely require it when patient come back with no response to the previous visit definitely requires a complete clinical evaluation and when there is a diagnostic dilemma it again requires a detailed evaluation now here there can be a problem like a primary physician who is examined the patient sometimes get biased that i have done everything so there it's good idea when you don't have a diagnosis to involve somebody else completely new and he will go through the whole process of history as well as clinical examination to give a different look and make clear diagnosis when we talk about a structured approach to the examination i will sort of kind of get them into different category the first and foremost is vitals so if there are abnormal vitals so pulse respiratory system the temperature the blood pressure and of course we talk about saturation oxygen saturation they will tell you if there is anything critical emergency life threatening going on at the present so that we can focus on that stabilize the patient and then move forward for a detail evaluation of this pulse and blood pressure i'm going to talk in my subsequent videos on the same steer channel then comes once you have seen that child is doing okay not very critical then we look at the anthropometry which will tell you about what is the duration of the disease what type of disease we are likely to be dealing with especially the chronic disorder the anthropometry gives you such a tremendous clues as far as duration whether it is acute whether it is chronic whether it is acute on chronic whether it is a genetic pattern of growth abnormality so many things that i'm sure the next talk is going to be dr uh, tushar maniar who will be again talking about this anthropometry then once you do this too then we go to a focused general examination relevant to the chief complaints like suppose you get a child with a joint pain then we will be doing a complete joint examination with pgals and other kind of uh, evaluation which are uh, already uh, perhaps must have been discussed then hemorrhagic rashes are there then we will be going to type of rash the local uh, local uh, kind of location of the rashes whether mucosa is affected or not then the, if there is a lymphadenopathy or swelling then we will be looking at whether it is a local lymphadenopathy general lymphadenopathy whether a particular area being affected so that's what i mean to say by focused general examination relevant to the chief complaint once you do that then we will be doing through a complete general examination from head to toe examination that involves uh, the, the the skin the spine the bones the joints the neck veins and 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 all all details of head to toe examination not to miss anything specific relevant to the diagnosis once you do that you'll be moving to a systemic examination wherein you would start with a relevant to history system examination once you complete with that then we'll be going through all system examination screen that's how the pattern will go then you will be going to remaining rest of the systemic examination as i said so suppose he comes with a fever 
with subsequent cough and breathlessness obviously will be focusing on the respiratory examination he comes with fever with subsequent headache altered sensodium vomiting seizure then he will be going for a neurological examination that's what i mean to say a relevant systemic examination once we finish with that you will be looking at other system as well not to miss any multi system disorder in a given patient i am again repeating all the general examination and a system examination will be following a good complete thorough clinical history you cannot be rushing on to examination prior to history there are certain things or certain findings which are commonly overlooked in a clinical practice which i just want to stress i am sure a good practitioner doesn't do that so for example anthropometry we are really stressed to see there sometimes there is no anthropometry written when the patient has followed for multiple times with a previous practitioner i think that's not a good trend at least when the patient comes to you first time you document his height his weight his head circumference and uh, maybe midarm circumference all those parameters at least first time so that subsequently when you are required to know what has happened to his growth or what was he at that particular time it really helps and it definitely helps in charting the growth charts which is a, such a wonderful investigation probably one of the most valuable information and investigation in any chronic case another thing which is commonly not done is a blood pressure recording as who mentions after 3 years every child should have at least one blood pressure recording every year when it comes to relevant to the history certainly if somebody comes with headache somebody comes with giddiness with palpitation with breathlessness with the edema i think blood pressure becomes absolutely relevant but even without that when they come for any routine checkup suppose a child comes at 5 years for a vaccination comes for 10 years for a vaccination 15 years for vaccination definitely make an effort to document his blood pressure in one and then one more thing which is commonly is four limb pulses i am sure in my lifetime i must have picked about 10 or 15 cases because i checked the four limb pulses so it could be few takai issue could be tuberculosis aorto arthritis or those kind of things but it's good idea to make a habit of this examination which can be so my one may ask how much time it will take if i go into all details believe me it doesn't take more than 2 minutes if you habit your body to go through all these examination the certain diagnostic clues which should not be missed if you don't do a complete examination say for example during your nerve scan a pupil the size and the response i must have picked so many poisoning cases because i picked up pupil where the child came with some come some kind of unnoticed findings then back of the patient very commonly missed i have missed i missed one of the patient of septic shock because paraspinal abscess was missed so don't forget to check these areas there are certain diagnostic kind of features so hr of a rickett ca though it is seen in about 30 to 70% of cases you pick up an hr you have made a diagnosis a palatal ulcer in a po child in a girl obels adolescent girl could be an sle a submucous cleft which could be a finding of a which can be a cause of a recurrent aspiration syndrome evanescent rash of a sogia subtle tachypnea with clubbing in a pm child which otherwise looking quite all right but if she has just got a failure to thrive and then you notice some borderline clubbing and maybe tachypnea could be a chronic interstitial lung disease a bad area hemangioma in a case of a strider could be manifest and could be diagnostic of a hemangioma in the airway passage upper airway a recurrent pneumonia in a cp child due to palatopharyngeal incompetence so simple things need not be should not be missed otherwise you will be missing a complete diagnosis there are other common things which are commonly missed in neonates a cleft palate is very commonly missed cataract undescended testis imperforate anus a congenital dysplastic hip the ddh we call it so those kind of things should not be missed especially i am sure you are getting a baby who is just sent to you for a routine examination a neonate and these are the things which may be missed and it's really miserable if he has come just for a routine examination and miss out on this and is being picked up later on and the child has to suffer then there are certain common pitfalls in the examination so examination with all clothes on that's very common to i understand in the northern belt where the child is uh, in a in a winter season child is brought and you are likely to miss if you don't expose the child completely so at least for one complete examination in this first visit make it a point to kind of remove all the clothes and see the patient in exposed completely exposed without clothes especially the genitals can be missed undescended testis the hernia the dsds the sacral anomaly the perineum anomaly can be missed in that spine and paraspinal area can be easily missed if you don't expose the child always examine the patient at least once with all the clothes removed that's a take home from this particular point different levels of wakefulness very important so examination while the child is quiet sleeping in mode so you get an irritable child in the opd half the children are irritable because of the disease 
and remaining half because they are in that kind of anxious, anxious atmosphere. So whenever in doubt, especially if you see you have an unexplained tachycardia, make it a point to make the child comfortable, maybe let him sleep, let him wait in the OPD, you may as at times rarely can give a sedative and, and make him sleep and check the heart rate again, otherwise you have a risk of missing a myocarditis, maybe a severe serial infection, so those kind of things, so try and make the child examine when he is quiet. Trends of examination is very important, so all the findings you may not get in a single examination. So when you are in doubt, especially blood pressure, if you document the borderline blood pressure and you are worried whether it is hypertensive, it's a good idea, send him back, come back next day, third day, check the blood pressure serially. If it is possible, if it is comfortable, then tell some general practitioner to go home and take check the, check the blood pressure. So certain examination do require serial repeated examination to make a final impression. So the trends of examination is also important not to miss anything. So friends, to summarize, a detailed history followed by thorough clinical examination gives diagnosis in most of the cases. Investigations merely confirm the diagnosis. In VZOPD, you may do focused clinical examination old patient, but detailed examination can save many unwarranted investigations. Thank you very much. The next talk is going to be on importance of growth monitoring by Dr. Tushar Maniar. Thank you very much.